slides or two books. Okay, so I used the, uh, I, yeah. is there a laser point? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, so I have to yes. be careful to not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's not showing on the screen. Okay, hello, um, I'm David. Uh, I do the talking, um, but the presentation was um, uh, curated um, together with uh, Tony Graham, um, Andrew Sales, and Eric Siegel. Um, sadly, Andrew can't be here today, uh, but Eric and Tony is. And I would like to provide a, a summary of, uh, well, we call it the state of the union, the state of uh, Schematron, as a, a standard, um, yeah, as a standard. The first slide is um, the one that's uh, hardest for me to, to explain, so um, I try. If you have been at uh, um, this conference before, then you know that um, since 2017, there were Schematron user meetups. And they were originally um, organized by Tony and Andrew. Uh, later, I joined the two, and uh, later, Eric. And we four organically somehow started to um, maintain um, what, well, I would call the, the community infrastructure. Uh, this means organizing the uh, users' meetups. This means um, um, providing a mailing list, uh, providing a GitHub, a GitHub organization. Um, we had uh, uh, an existential crisis and asked ourselves, who are we for? We are not just for individuals. Um, I think the most fitting description is uh, community representatives. Um, it's important to understand that this is a descriptive title. It's not something that comes with any uh, benefits for us, it's what we do. Uh, and we chose uh, to think uh, of us as the Schematron editorial board, which uh, what I learned is uh, a reference to the SGML editorial board, uh, a group of people who uh, care um, about the community or about Schematron in the, in the bigger picture. Um, you can meet us, uh, of course, today. You can also come to the, uh, this year's um, users meetup, uh, which is held uh, tomorrow at 9.40. So now you know who we are. Um, let's get started. Um, what I would like to do is I would like to give a really short summary of what Schematron is, um, then give a perspective on what happened in the world of Schematron in the past let's say 10 years, really, really short, and uh, we'll finish with some thoughts about uh, what will happen with Schematron in the future. Uh, for the ones of you who don't know, uh, Schematron is a, a schema language for rule-based validation. It's part of the uh, ISO's document schema definition languages, uh, DSDL, and Schematron lets you check uh, arbitrary parts of your documents against any number of arbitrary business rules. Um, in practice, uh, Schematron implementations uh, use XPath um, to select uh, parts of your documents and use XPath as um, language to evaluate um, the rules. Um, there are three basic elements in Schematron. There's an element for the assertions, um, contains a human readable assertion and has a test attribute with, a, with an expression that tests if the assertion holds true. There's a rule element um, that groups assertions and provides the context uh, for the assertion tests. And there's a pattern element that groups rules uh, that are related in a, a user-defined way. This is a, a really sh simple example of a, a Schematron. Um, it's taken uh, from a, a, a digital scholarly edition. Um, uh, line three is the pattern. You see there's a, a rule that says um, uh, the following tests uh, apply to RS elements with the type attribute of person. 
And the assertion uh, is that there is a ref attribute on this RS element, and the ref attribute points to an element um, that is of uh, the type a TI person. Um, and for example, not something else like a place. Um, it's straightforward. A schematron is way more than just these uh, simple things. Um, schematron provides um, uh, element or constructs for schema reuse, uh, for schema composition, uh, supports localization, uh, message templating, templating of rules, and also uh, includes uh, its own simple uh, schema documentation language. It's a jack of all trades in some way. Uh, why would you use Schematron? Um, one, it's an ISO standard. This may be something that you uh, need to tick off, uh, or this may be an argument. Um, more importantly, it lets you express functional dependencies uh, in your documents, documents that you can't express in other schema languages. Um, Schematron implementations are built on top of uh, well-matured technologies, um, in most cases, XLT and XPath. Maybe this is also an argument. Uh, Schematron has been around for more than 15 years. Uh, it's heavily in use, so it has warts. I will come to the, some of them, but it works, uh, and people are using it. There's a quote from Rick Jaliff. Uh, Rick was the, or is the initial, initial inventor of Schematron. Um, uh, said it, I think, really good. It said, uh, Schematron is a feather duster to reach the corners of other, that other schema languages cannot reach. Um, yeah, it's a nice summary. Um, that's, that's Schematron in a, in a really short um, description what, what it is. Um, It doesn't, hmm. Okay, let's come to the Schematron community. Um, uh, first start with a, with a really, really short timeline of what, what happened in the world of Schematron. Um, I'm not elaborate, uh, just listing, I'm not reading all the points. Uh, we have uh, late 1990s uh, when it all started. Um, uh, 1999 was the first implementation uh, in XLCFT1. Uh, the idea of Schematron goes uh, further back. Um, we had uh, 2006, uh, the first uh, edition of the ISO uh, Schematron specification. 2016, the second edition, and 2020, the third edition. Um, and since uh, 2017, uh, we have always uh, had all all of us had a user's meetup at XML Prague. Um, at the start of the user's meetup, we make some kind of market research, who uses it. Um, and if you ask who, who uses Schematron, the answer is almost everybody. Um, almost every industry uses Schematron for the most different tasks um, in finance, healthcare, in the publishing business, um, in the digital humanities, in libraries, for, for every kind of, uh, of task um, that has to do with rule-based validation or reporting. Um, what I personally learned is uh, if you meet someone who processes XML in a large, uh, in larger and smaller quantities, you are, and who does quality control, you can be pretty certain that they use Schematron. Um, it's, it's a, great, uh, a great tool. Uh, as I've said, uh, we meet uh, at XML Prague, uh, or some of the community meets at XML Prague uh, tomorrow at 9.30. Um, if you want to learn about Schematron, um, there is a mailing list, uh, the Schematronists, uh, Schematronist uh, mailing list, where you can meet uh, other people uh, that use Schematron. There's the homepage of uh, Rick Jaliff, the original inventor, uh, who has 
uh, collected a lot of information about Schematron um, covering, uh, uh, well, starting with the beginnings. Um, there's a GitHub organization um, where we, uh, we four of us uh, started to collect um, Schematron-related materials. Um, especially, we started an awesome Schematron um, repository where we try to um, provide a, a systematic overview of um, things that are done with or for Schematron. Um, if you look back, or I, I looked back uh, four or five years, publications about Schematron, um, they range from uh, uh, um, Hillman and Lissy, uh, who discussed uh, quality control in uh, uh, journal publishing, I think it was. Um, you have uh, um, publications from the Digital Humanities um, about a Schematron quick fix. Uh, this is an extension to Schematron. Um, all the way down to uh, an, a book about Schematron that will be published uh, this year uh, and written by Eric. September 2020. 20, 20. Now, 2022, oh dear. Um, there are also new ideas or new features that uh, are discussed in the wider community. There's an implementation um, that tries to match or to implement Schematron for JSON validation. Um, there are thoughts about um, using the XSLT3 streaming um, to, for Schematron. And uh, there's, an, for example, an article by me that discusses a problem with uh, the, the the Schematron uh, language, um, yeah. Um, we four, uh, the four of us, um, um, started to collect all these ideas. Um, so we um, created an, a repository that we call the Schematron Enhancement Proposal Repository, where we started to collect uh, the things that are floating in the, in the wider or closer community. Um, we create an issue for something that we need, think that needs to be enhanced or corrected. Uh, we use labels um, to make a distinction between uh, corrections of the specification text, um, clarifications that are required, or new functions or enhancements that uh, could or will be useful uh, in further in future schema versions. Um, we accompany the issues with the uh, wiki pages that have a, a longer description about uh, what the problem is, what the proposed solution could be. For example, uh, I've picked some. Um, if you use, oh, that's, uh, that's the simplest one. That's an editorial error in the specification. There's uh, just an, an error in section 313 of the 2020 specification that should be fixed. Um, so these corrections are, well, editorial corrections. There are parts of the schema tron specification that needs to be clarified. And I think the biggest uh, elephant in this room is uh, the schema tron validation reporting language. Uh, schema tron defines, no, schema tron talks about a validation language um, or a language to express the result of schema tron validation. But this uh, language is not uh, specified um, in the ISO specification in a, well, it's not specified. It's just mentioned that it exists. Um, and this causes problems for implementers or for people who use Schematron because it's, you, you don't know what to do. And, you, uh, and there are some inconsistencies um, between the Schematron and the reporting language. Um, this is something that, uh, for example, a future version of Schematron should uh, or must address. Um, there are enhancements, uh, like this maybe is a simple one, um, um, make it possible to provide the type of a variable in Schematron. Um, or um, maybe a more esoteric one, I don't know. Um, Schematron has uh, the concept of uh, uh, abstract patterns and you currently, uh, so it's a kind of a templating language uh, for rules. 
And currently, you can't specify which parameters of the template are actually used by the template, um, which causes problems uh, or could cause problems uh, if you want if you try to um, instantiate uh, at the template language. Um, and if you write a processor, you you you, you can't check if um, the the uh, the template is used uh, correctly as it should be. Um, Um, this is a, a quick ride through what, what we did, what uh, Schematron is. Um, let me come through the, um, oh yeah, um, to the future of Schematron. Um, it's worth uh, revisiting the, the history in short. Um, Schematron was incorporated into ISO in 2006. Um, there was a draft in, for a second revision in 2010, uh, which was uh, adopted in 2016, uh, 2016. Um, so it moved quite slowly. Um, now forward uh, four years, uh, 2020, um, three things happened that are important for Schematron. The first is that a third revision was published um, that um, added, among other things, XSL3 and XPath3. Most, more importantly, the working group responsible for this uh, specification um, disbanded. Um, and sadly, ISO made this edition of the standard uh, a non-public standard. Before you could uh, read the standard uh, for free, now you have to um, pay money uh, to do this. And this is a problem for Schematron because without a working group, um, corrections, enhancements uh, go nowhere. Uh, if, the ISO, if the Schematron standard sh should change, then it has to happen from inside ISO and if there's no working group, there won't be any change. Um, and there are things that need to be changed um, and that people sometimes already did change in the implementations. Um, the four of us um, discussed about this issue, I, I, I mean, for the, last, the last year, uh, what to do. Um, and our current plan is to um, initiate work on a new ISO Schematron edition that incorporates uh, corrections, clarifications, and enhancements from the Schematron Enhancement Proposals Repository. Um, a new work item for the ISO SC34 plenary in September will be proposed uh, this month, it's a deadline. And if everything goes according to plan, there will be a new edition of ISO Schematron uh, ready in 24 or 36 months, two years or three, two or three years. Um, now, what could you do to help? Um, if you are a user of Schematron uh, or interested in Schematron, uh, we ask you to join the discussion of the enhancement proposals. Um, the, the, the things we discuss in this GitHub repository will be the input to the new work item, which is uh, due this month. So we have to make a selection of what we, um, or what will be in this work item. If you want to get involved with the ISO process, uh, you can do so through your national body. And um, if you have any questions uh, that I I can't answer now, but um, come uh, to our users meetup tomorrow at 9.30 and see what uh, Schematron does for other users. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. We have plenty of time for questions, so Stephen. 
So about the ISO process, how, how, diffi a, how difficult it is, is it to, to, to standardize via ISO? And two, doesn't ISO make its money by selling specifications? And so how do you make it available to the wider public? Um, I, the first question I can't, uh, I can't answer. Uh, that's uh, the expertise of Andrew. Uh, he's been the, um, the editor of the Schematron specification and he's the one that has the, the, the required knowledge about uh, the whole process. Um, so I can't give you an answer uh, about this. Um, the second question about the, the yeah, well, yes, ISO makes money with selling the, the standards. ISO also has a list of public available, or publicly available standards that you can uh, get for free. Um, our hope is that um, we can change, it will be possible to change ISO's mind with regards to the uh, newest revision that we hope that will be there, that this will be, again, a publicly available standard. Um, I think one thing that's, uh, that's at least clear for, for, for me, it's, it's clear is that the lack of an open discussion about the third revision uh, um, made it easier to close uh, the specification. If we have an open and a public discussion about the things that we want to change, then it might be harder um, to argue that uh, the ISO has uh, the entire copyright, uh, something along these lines. But, um, well, I don't like to say this. Uh, it's crucial to know that even if you have to pay money, it's still an open standard. So it doesn't make it close, um, doesn't make it close, uh, a closed standard. It's just you have to pay. Um, <laughs> yes. I know, um, but we, we try to, to, to make this an argument to say uh, open standards and the answer is uh, by certain definitions of open standards, it's still open. So this is not an argument that's, that's uh, that's passed in the German. Open that's but okay. not free. Yes, yes. There is a question from Ken. Yes, um, I think I can answer a bit of Steve's question as well. I was the secretariat manager for SC34 in 2006 when it became a standard. And the PAS process, the publicly available specification process, does allow for a specification that has been developed under a, uh, a duty under a process that has been acceptable to ISO as being an open process to come into the ISO world and be published on that publicly available specification page because it came from outside of ISO. The argument I have heard, now I have not been involved in SC34 for a while, but I did ask, the argument that I have heard is that enough has changed within ISO that the spec is no longer recognizable as the original one that came from the community, and that was their, quote, justification. I don't agree with it, but that was their justification. Uh, I'm wondering if the community, by developing the next version of this and contributing that from the community, I'm curious, do you know which national body is bringing this forward? Uh, UK. The UK is doing it excellent. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, maybe there will be some, some arguments there. I think it will be a tough sell mm -hmm. to ISO. Uh, and one of the questions that's always been with the ISO version of that is the copyright on the text in mm -hmm. the standard itself. You cannot lift sentences out of the ISO document and put them into your software, for example, because of copyright issues. So um, there, there are a lot of roadblocks, but at the time, in 2006, we did have the commitment mm -hmm. that Schematron would remain open, but I gather ISO thinks that they have changed, the committee has changed it enough that it's no longer the original. I don't agree with that, but that's my understanding of, uh, of why we are where we are. Thank you. Okay, we have one. Uh, there is some comment from Andrew. Thank you, Tony. 
So there is a link to some additional comments from Jig, Rick Jellyfy. I cannot click on the link, so maybe interested persons can now look into the Twitter. And there is, yeah, from Eric, another question. Uh, what I would like to add about the standard is that the standard document that you can buy is actually very short and very terse and very, very technical. Um, so I think there, if you want to know about Schematron, you don't need it. I mean, you don't spend this 158 Swiss francs on this ISO document. Just look at what's online available, and I think there will be more. There's more than enough information online to be found to learn Schematron. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Ah, there is from Matt. Uh, thank you. Is there um, is there any any real benefit to remaining an ISO standard, or could 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 it become schema troid and and step out and be open again if if all development is happening in the community anyway? I think the answer is uh, I'm not a lawyer, so but the answer we are thinking that this is also an option to. Well, you would have to write the, uh, the new text because the copyright is uh, definitely for the text of the specification. But this would be also a, a way to move forward um, to um, basically fork Schematron at a point in the past and just create your own. Yes, this would be also possible. I think it might make it harder to sell um, to customers um, to use this new thing. But and you need to write it, so that's... Uh... Yeah, Stephen has something to say. So there, uh, there are a number of XML-based uh, things that need standardizing, and since the XML uh, activity at W3C has gone, uh, we, we're, we're all sorts of, we're, we're all a bit uh, orphans. Mm -hmm. And it sounds to me like we ought to create an organization to support the standardization of XML-based standards mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in the community to, to ex exactly address these problems. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's too much work to set up something if you can just create Git repository. <laughs> so probably it was all, but if you are interested in Schematron, you can tomorrow morning continue with questions because there will be this uh, Schematron users meetup. So thank you very much again.